Hello friends, I'm Larry with Ride Stand Ride. I'm at the 2019 Portland Roadster Show. I'm with Lou Barnes. We'll call you Sergeant Lou Barnes, as that's basically you've earned that honor. Roger that. And uh, thank you, first of all, for your service. And, and we want to talk about your service. And, and uh, you know, Lou, there, we're, we're coming to a time now where, where people are getting older and, and if we can't talk are to you, you about me, we we can't talk to you about uh, the real witness account, eyewitness accounts of, of these things that you saw. Soon, people won't be around anymore. And we, we, I wanted to uh, have you talk about. Give me a story that let's let's go with a lighthearted story. Was there anything in the midst of this Vietnam War that could be comedic in any way? First off, let me say that I would not have traded the experience number one of being a Marine or having gone to Vietnam. Uh, war is an ugly, ugly business. Amen. But I can't tell you, and I can't even relate to you, the, the relationships that you acquire by being there and having going into combat with people. You're there to save one another's life and come back and don't give the other guy the option. And that's, you know, that's the bottom line. Uh, uh, an interesting story was probably happened seven or eight years ago when one of our pilots died, uh, Deke Warner, down in California. Uh, obviously, a number of us show up, the Marines, for his funeral, and we had a wake afterward. There was one uh, Marine that was obviously in our squadron, Mike Zacker, a retired master gunnery sergeant. He achieved, he stayed in 30 years, and he was a wonderful guy. And we start BSing a little bit, and he says, uh, you know, I almost got burned up twice over there. And I said, really? What, what was that? And he said, well, the first time I got shot, done, shot down a little bit west of Quezon over in Dodge City. And we were in a paddy. The fuel cells were leaking pretty bad. But they had the zone secured. So he's up trying to get the rotor head ready so they could pick the bird up and get it out of the zone. Well, while he's up on the rotor head, some uh, VCs in the bush and the tree line starts throwing rounds at him. And they were bouncing off the transmission. So Mike jumps off of the top, they're quite high, they're 16 feet in the air, and jumps in the rice paddy, now he's soaked in gas and, and water. And he's thinking to himself, oh no, this guy's gonna ricochet around, it's gonna spark, and I'm gonna end up a crispy critter. <laughs> and I said, man, that's, that's wild. And I said, when was the second time? And he said, well, we were I was flying as a gunner uh, up on the DMZ, and we sat down at LZ Stud, which is a uh, it's a combat base, but it's out in, out in the wild. And we were doing a hot refuel, which means the bird's turning. You don't shut it down. Mm -hmm. you you got to refuel and get out. Mm -hmm. So the crew chief had to slide the door forward because we were way low, and he stuck the nozzle in. Now the door cannot come back. He's standing next to me, which I didn't know while he's telling me the story. And he said, then we started taking mortars, and they were bouncing all around the helicopter, I mean exploding. The pilots just took off. He said the crew chief was hooked to the plane with his gunner's belt, so he got jerked up with the plane took off. The hose broke loose and soaked me in gas. And I said, hey, let me finish the story for you, Mike. And he goes, what do you mean? And he goes, the plane flies back to Dong Ha, which you didn't know. He goes, okay. And he said, then we come back to pick you up. Got the nozzle out, got the door opened up. And he goes, how'd you know that? I said, I was the crew chief. You were my gunner. Um, I mean, then that was 40 years later. That wow, we were that is about amazing. That. Uh, coupled with that story is a fellow that I went to high school with, uh, Randy Pyle. Uh, Randy was with the 8th Marines, which were right in that area. Well, he's got a photograph that, uh, that he showed me a year or two after I got out of the Corps. I didn't know he went in the Marine Corps. He didn't know I went in the Marine Corps. And he's showing me or showing someone else pictures of his Vietnam stuff. And he goes, yeah, look at this. And here's a picture of this guy hanging out of this helicopter. And I looked over at him. I said, no way. Where was that at? He goes, LZ Stud. <laughs> I get, hey, brother, that's me. I mean, the coincidence of that's all of that amazing. coming to pacing. Yeah, it was uh, still is amazing. <laughs> but um, yeah, those are a couple. Uh, at the time, it wasn't all that much fun when the mortars were going off. but. After you're sitting in a tavern having a beer 40 years later talking about it, it wasn't all that it, bad. It's not that bad the it's second time around. You, uh, how, how long were you in there? You, you served? In Vietnam? Yeah. Uh, I got there in August of 68 and left in September of 69. 13 months. Mm. That's a, the, the tour for a Marine. It's mm -hmm. 13 months. And certainly witnessed uh, a, a lot while you were there. You know, one of the questions that I was curious about is, is 
movies versus documentaries and and we want to assume documentaries obviously they're talking to people like we're talking now so you're hearing it right out of your mouth that that witnessed it have, have the movies got close yet or are they still a long ways away from being able to really capture what was going on over there all of the, the the movies that I've seen from Vietnam, which would be Apocalypse Now, Platoon, and Full Metal Jacket, the only real realistic parts of that was probably the first half of Full Metal Jacket. That that one that's real. Mm -hmm. The rest of it is uh, a lot of political innuendo that goes into that. You know, a bunch of people smoking dope, people murdering people, that sort of thing. Um, uh, I think uh, I'd only known two people that ever smoked dope that were thrown in the brig. I never saw anybody get murdered. Uh, you know, it was a war. Uh, so most of it, from my perspective, is 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 fluff. It's the the fallout from uh, from coming back is something that has seemed pretty common. You know that that you hear about, and and how much of that you know, was, was real, coming back and, and, and having things, reactions and people, and did that happen to you as well? That was real. I mean, the part about the, the hate and discontent, yeah. uh, you know, people calling you a murderer, a baby killer, and, and all of those sorts of things. Yeah, that legitimately happened. Um, when I was walking back through LAX to get on a plane to come back to Portland, I, I, this corporal and I were confronted by three people and uh, they were looking up at the lights very shortly thereafter and uh, you know it's just the way it went but it didn't really bother me all that much uh, I did what I did because I wanted to do it I didn't do it because anybody else wanted me to do it I wanted to serve my country I wanted to help those people out and uh, if somebody had a misrepresentation of me that's their problem not mine that's right and I just want to make sure that you're aware that that even though we know that those kind of things have happened, there there are a lot of people around that that didn't feel that way and that love you for your service and, and appreciate what you did. And, and I, I think that there came times over a course of years where I started seeing people say those kind of things, and I really started believing it myself that that people started realizing that what had happened there was so wrong, and and that that nobody can make it up to you, but all we can say is thank you so much and we appreciate what it is that you did. Well, I, I thank for your kind words, but in all seriousness, uh, I did it because I wanted to do it. I didn't do it for any accolades. I didn't yeah. do it for any slap on the back. Yeah. I did it for a cause. Yeah. And we did what we did and, and I'm proud of it. Uh, well, I, I do like the fact that uh, one of the great things that came out of it was a really great car. Yes, and, uh, that's true. <laughs> and so if you guys uh, uh, will pay attention, uh, Lou and I did another, uh, another interview where we cover this great car that he has put together and that uh, is, has been dedicated to these guys. So watch that video. and We really appreciate you being with us, Lou, and taking the time. Thanks. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you guys next time.